Right up, so we're going to run this file and check where we're at from last time. So we've got a bunch of cart products, but the issue is when we got this, add four for nothing's getting fed through. We have got, if we go into the console and look at carts, oops, cart items, it's being added and it's got this four here, which was this four there. So we want to get this fed through. So this is in the update cart. So I want to firstly grab this. So I'm going to say um, var items count equals document dot get element by ID. The ID here is items count item count. Uh, hopefully shouldn't interfere with them being the exact same names. What the heck? No. Um, yeah. Right, items count. Item counter, we're going to call that just because of paranoia. Right. So, I'm going to go var total items because I'm going to want this to be grabbed from another function later on so that's why I've made it outside of the function so it's public this one being made inside is private I can't refer to item counter unless I make it out here right um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go total items equals zero just to make sure it gets set to zero every time this reruns, because what I want to do is uh, items, uh, can't items there. Let's refresh this, this should be better. Can't items. Um, no, it's empty now. Right, add, 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 add. Right, can't items there. So, what I want it to do is go set to zero and then recount. Every time I add one, it sets it to zero and just recounts and adds this on again, rather than just adding the last one on. Um, so I'm going to go for loop and basically just loop through the array. Var i equals zero. If i is less than item uh, cart items dot length i uh, i plus plus um right uh yes i've made it a number up here so that should be fine for counting then so then we want to go total items plus equals cart items i looping through one because it's annoying when it does that um one the the first one in the list is this information that's been added and then it has like the actual number of items on the end there equals that and then i'm basically going to say Item counter dot inner HTML equals total items because that is the thing we're filling in. This is the thing in the H, uh, the zero that's set here. So this gives us a refresh then. Add one. Oh, there's one. Right, let's go add two, add three. Let's go three plus three three more six add six okay so it's all feeding through consistently you can see um cart items yep one two three yep so it's six it's all working okay fantastic that's that part this is now what we want to do is we basically want to add 
the option to go to the shop and actually see what things we've purchased in case you want to delete or whatever whatever so um, in order to do this we need to um, go through and add the option to navigate to those two pages so I'm just gonna check right in here nav href as per usual equals index yeah and I'm gonna call this um, shop do yeah this one's gonna be called cart and I'll call this cart.index right okay so they're gonna be in there real real raw and nasty so let's do a little bit of tidy up because I need another page I need basically this page to access some of the JavaScript stuff as well, the other cart page, and it's not going to be able to access some of it. So I need to make this an external file. So I'm going to take everything from here to there. Go cut. And I'm going to go video, new file. Uh, I'll call it uh, shopping dot JavaScript. Shopping should have two P's though. Right, paste. Okay, just this should indent in now. Right, let's save there. Let's get rid of this actual layer. Right, so if I just close this up out my way, in here I'm going to go script source equals that JavaScript file. So now that's loading that JavaScript file rather than being internally done. So when I make this cart.html, this line will be there as well. This style sheet being internally done is not ideal either. So we'll just make that external just because I hate having external uh, internal style sheets anyway. New file, styles.css. Great, go here, take all the stuff out of styles. Go cut, styles, paste, save. Oh yeah, just indent everything, that's better. Right there, let's get rid of these style tags there. And we need to now refer to it, so um, link relationship equals style sheet href equals styles. That's linked that now. So this is still, if I refresh the page, still doing all what it did before, which is using the style and using this here. So in the styles, I can go background color gray, uh, the style none, okay, um, and go padding 20 pixels. Right, and margin 10 pixels. There you go. Okay, and I can say to the unordered list display grid, uh, grid dot templates, columns, whatever. 1FR, 1FR, 1FR. List items now. I want this to be 100% of its list items. Why is this? Grid dash gap. Pixels. Ah, it's because of the padding. Um, Do you know what? Just to, this to make life easier. I'm just gonna do this. There you go. And there's a big gap here. Um, there you go. Let's tidy that up. 
Okay, so we got our list there and the things, and we can now go up, down, add. That's going there. Great. This add should probably click down to zero afterwards, and we want to make this add not go into negatives, um, but that's fine. I'll get these here. Nav A text, text decoration none. Um, color. Um, it's a color that's not so painful. Black. Right. Uh, font dash size. 30 pixels. Margin. Top bottom zero pixels. Left right we'll just say three percent. Right. Um, nav display inline block just. Why is it doing that? Uh, width, width equals 20%, I guess. Right, that's sitting better. Right, nav a uh, hover color uh, gray, let's say. Right. I don't like that. Blue. Okay, so oops, let's just make this width eighty percent. Right, there we go. That's sitting a bit nicer. Okay. <sighs> These can all be laid out nicer and stuff, but I just really can't be bothered. Um, okay, so what we want to do is we want to be able to go to this and go add. There you go. Add. Add. And then go to the cart. And then cart.html doesn't exist yet, so we want to get all those things going. So I'm going to take this, copy, add a new video here. And we call this, what did I call it? Cart.html. Yep, cart.html. Paste. Right. So the only thing is, we don't want this running load uh, run. I'll say load cart because obviously we don't want to populate it with the shop page. We want to be cart and then it sh populate it with the things we've purchased. Um, Right. And I want that to be different as well. So I'm going to say grab this by cart products. Right. And just to differentiate them from here, hashtag cart, oops, can't have a space, cart products. Um, display block. Right, that should, okay. Right, so what we want to do is we want to start feeding in through um, the information. So if we look in the shopping thing cart now, this was our, our function for loading the products on the shop page. So we basically want to do that again, but for the cart now. So this on the cart was called for load cart. Ah. 
load cart. Products on the cart page. Right, and then we want to get this by cart. Ugh. Cart products. Right. Now, um, we're not going to want an add button. We're going to want a delete button. But I'm going to call. I'm going to call delete item. It's a button. Do I want a type box? No. So I want to see obviously a list item. I need to see the product. I need to say the you know the price of the product. Product description. Sure, why not? Do I want this? No. I might want, however, an amount and I will probably want a subtotal, which really should probably be an H3. Okay, do I need that? No. So, well, then we're going to go add element. We've got pick, price, description, add. Now delete item. Um, delete item amount. Subtotal. Right. So this should be delete item say so delete we don't want the box type don't need any of the box type stuff and I'm going to call this delete me is the function I make a function here called delete me so it doesn't complain delete me alert right that's just to run something real basic in there okay so next thing we need okay so we've got description got all the delete stuff together so I'll, I'll group that together then I need the amount and subtotal. The amount and subtotal. Right, so the amount should be, let's see how we grab the amount for the update function. Update cart items. I1 right I1 and subtotal equals That, which is the amount times the price. I see we're grabbing it from items. And this shouldn't be grabbed from items. So it should be, be grabbed from uh, cart items. And I know this will be slightly different, but I'm just going to let it kind of break so that you can kind of see what we've got. Right. And we'll see where our issues are. Okay, so we're loading code. Da, 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 da. This seems all fine so far. Right, so we go back to our shop. I'm going to add one hat. So we're going to add 
two of these ones and add one of those because why not? Then we're going to go to the cart. It's recognized something, but it's not filling anything in. That's probably a button by the looks of that. So let's see in the elements. You are ally. See what it tried to fill in. H1, H2 button. It's just grabbed no data. So if I look at, cannot read a property of zero, shopping 94. I'll come back to that in a minute. But cart items, the array, is empty. And see, this is still empty. What's happened is we've gone from this page and done this, add, one, cart, zero. It's refreshed the data. And so I need to actually save cart items into the session memory for the uh, the website browser. So that way it can actually remember it when it goes from page to page. And then that way I can render the stuff from here and then see if when I'm trying to reference these things here from the cart item that it's actually the right way to reference it. Okay, so what I'll do is we'll park that as part one because we've tidied these files up a whole lot made things kind of sit a lot nicer and um, we got that update cart going in the navigation and the styling which I did at 100 miles an hour um, the joys of pause and rewind and then yeah we're going to try and get this rendering and then we can start working on like the delete function after that okay so there you have it